Okay, start. Hi guys. In previous sessions, we discussed only basic information about representation of automata and uh, what an automata should contain. From this session, we'll just solve some of the problems or like what I can say, maybe another 6 to 8 sessions, we only discuss on solving finite automata or as it is specified in the textbook it could be finite state machine or finite state automata or just a finite automata. As I have already told in my previous sessions, this finite automata are of three types or finite state machines are of three types. One is deterministic finite automata. Second one is non-deterministic finite automata. Number three, non-deterministic finite automata with epsilon moves or epsilon transitions where deterministic finite automata is also called as DFA this is also called as NFA this we call it as epsilon NFA usually we use these terms for our discussion as specified in other terms also we can say finite state machine or we can say deterministic finite state machine also now basically we need to understand what is deterministic finite automata mean and then solve at least 10 to 12 problems as a minimum on this then we go for remaining things now when i talk about dfa or deterministic finite automata please make it clear we have discussed or we already understood automata is a machine finite automata means machine with finite number of states but when i talk about deterministic it has to be clearly understood what it mean where when i talk about dfa deterministic or explicitly determinism determinist uh, determined or deterministic whatever when i use the word determined that clearly says defined exactly defined or the path is known something probably i can take an example where if i ask someone what is your aim we say something but if i say is it determined the question would something change where i know the aim and also i should know how to reach there so even here i have an automata for every problem or I have an automata for every language defined and also it is defined, it is determined. There is no confusion in anything. On all these things, we can have one common conclusion or one common definition for it where it says in DFA there exists only one transition. for every input symbol in each state so please understand this statement properly it clearly says in every state there should be only one transition recall automata contains state input symbols now we need to map it to get a transition but if it is a DFA it is very much clear that in how many ever states the automata may have and how many ever stay how many ever input symbols automata may be uh, designed to but when you define a transition there should be exactly one transition for every input symbol for every state say suppose if you have three states and two input symbols then obviously you'll have two transitions for every state so totally you can have six transitions that is because as I said DFA is deterministic and the path is well defined. Keeping this in mind, 
we just formally define the DFN. Make very much clear in this subject, in this course, we focus on formal definition than on explanation. So, when I talk about a formal definition, if I denote M as an automata, explicitly M as a DFA, I say a DFA M is a five tuple system. What do you call the tuples? I say M equals Q sigma delta Q naught and F where Q is finite set of internal states. So these on these are the states on which you get a DFA. Sigma is finite set of external input symbols. So we try to map states with sigma and delta is a transition function remember delta is a transition function it is defined as q cross sigma gives rise to delta so we try to map q and sigma this is what i told where for every state for every input symbol there is a mapping so it gives rise to q sorry where q naught is initial state q naught belongs to q and f is finite set of accepting states or we say final states anything can be used and again f should be subset of q so make it very much clear dfa is a five tuple system with q sigma delta q naught f q is set of internal states sigma is set of external input symbols delta is a transition function where delta is q cross sigma is delta sorry q q naught is initial state should always belongs to q f is set of final states or accepting states is again subset of q thank you